In this video, we're going to learn about nomenclature of ionic compounds, which includes both binary ionic compounds and compounds that contain polyatomic ions. And we'll also learn when to use the stock system and when it's not necessary. Um, so uh, a binary ionic compound, first of all, we need to understand what it is. When I say binary, I mean that there are two elements. Um, and when I say ionic compound, I mean that it's going to be something where there's a metal and a non-metal. Um, it's also possible for polyatomic ions to play a role, but we'll get to that later. Um, so nomenclature in, for these compounds can be quite simple. We just need to name the metal, and then we need to add the non-metal name with an i suffix. So if we have MgCl2, that is just magnesium, the name of the metal. And then instead of saying chlorine, we say chloride. And if we go in reverse, uh, the formula for sodium oxide, we would have to realize that sodium is Na, oxide is O, and we need to get the charge for each. Sodium is group one, so it will lose one valence electron to get the noble gas configuration of uh, neon. And oxygen will gain two to get the nearest noble gas configuration as well. So we have a negative two ion and a positive one. And to make their charges cancel out, I need two sodium ions um, to balance out my negative two oxide anion. So although my work is shown here with the positive and the negative above the elements, my answer is this, Na2O. Moving on, um, here is a problem. Um, if I just say copper chloride, then I don't really clarify which copper chloride I'm talking about. So it, if, if you write copper chloride, I don't know, as a chemist, I don't know whether you're talking about CuCl or CuCl2. And the reason is that um, you, you need some clarifier here because copper could have multiple possible um, uh, positive charges. Um, it's not like a group one or a group two ion where you know it's gonna be positive one always or positive two always. So we have to use what's called the stock system to clarify whether I'm talking about copper one chloride, which is this one, and it would be copper two chloride if I'm talking about this one. But well, let's learn about that a little bit more uh, here. So again, with group one, you know it's positive one. Group two, they're always gonna be positive two ions. But these guys right in here, the D block, you don't know what charge they're going to have in a compound. Um, so we need to use the stock system with any D block metals and also with any F block metals. Uh, because those are not main group uh, metals either. Um, additionally, we need to use the stock system for tin or lead because both lin, uh, sorry, both tin and lead um, can take on positive two or positive four charges, which um, is uncommon. Um, that's the actual only exception because uh, when we get outside of the D block and F block, Pretty much everything follows the patterns that you're expecting, but these could be plus two or plus four. They have two different possibilities. Um, in the case of the D block, there are exceptions. Um, and those exceptions are uh, zinc, cadmium, and silver. But um, that's, that's because zinc only is ever positive two. Um, silver is only ever positive one. And cadmium, is only ever positive two when it's in a compound. Now, how do you remember this? I think we can make a line from aluminum, which you know is plus three because it's in group three. So aluminum, gallium, indium, they're all plus three. Um, so aluminum being plus three, we go to the left and down one, well, that's gonna be plus two only, and silver is plus one, also cadmium plus two. So you get this three, two, one, uh, relationship with these exceptions. They're all close to each other and they do follow a pattern. Um, so the exceptions are zinc and cadmium and silver. Um, so you don't need to use the stock system with those two or with those three. 
So let's say we have CUO. If we're trying to name it, um, what we can do is realize that copper has multiple possible charges, so I need to use the stock system. So I say copper with a Roman numeral oxide. And what I can do is realize that my oxygen is always negative two. And since there's only one of them and only one copper, my copper has to be plus two. So I say copper two oxide versus down here, this is also a copper oxide, but it's a different copper um, oxide. And we can figure that out uh, by uh, realizing our oxygen, again, is always a negative two, but I've got two coppers that balance out my negative two oxygen. So each copper has to be positive one in order to balance out the one negative two oxygen. So we have copper one oxide. Lead two oxide going in the other direction, it's actually pretty easy because all I need to do is go, okay, I got PB and I've got O. My PB is plus two, my O is negative two. And so I just need it to be PBO since one of each cancel each other out. In case of lead four oxide, I put a PB with a positive four above it. I put an O with a negative two above it. And I realize I need two oxides to balance out the charge of the lead. And there we go. Uh, now, if we're talking about ionic compounds that have polyatomic ions, these are ternary compounds. Um, uh, and they're recognizable because we have more than two elements. We have Na, N, and O. Uh, in these cases, you want to look for a recognizable polyatomic ion, which here is our nitrate. This is NO3 negative. Um, and you just name the same way that you would any other uh, compound, any other ionic compound. You just say sodium, the name of the metal. So sodium, and then the NO3 minus is called nitrate. So you just say nitrate. Um, in the case of CuOH in parentheses two, we say copper. And this is a case where we've got a transition metal. We need to realize that each uh, hydroxide, the OH, is OH with a negative one charge. So you will need to know uh, not just the name, but also the charge of each polyatomic ion. And in this case, we say it's copper two hydroxide because each negative hydroxide um, is negative one and we've got two of them. So we need a positive two copper uh, to balance out the uh, negative two from the two uh, hydroxides. Um, good, just one more word of caution, uh, and this really burns people uh, sometimes uh, when we're going from names to formulas. Um, the names can be very similar for the anionic part. Uh, look at this, ide, sodium nitride, if I see the ide ending, I think just the element itself. So I look at Na, I look at N, I know Na is positive one, I know that N is negative three, and so I need it to be Na3N, and there we go. But if I see no sodium nitrite, well, nitrite is different. It's <clears throat> Na, um, NO2. My NO2 is negative one, my Na is positive one, and there's my formula, NaNO2. So sodium nitrite, with the T here instead of the D, it's almost the same name. It's a very different formula. And also, if I make it eight, if I change the eight to eight, I'm just changing one letter, but that is um, with NO3 minus, um, and the Na is still positive one. So my sodium nitrite, or sorry, my sodium nitrate is this. Very big difference. Um, sodium nitrate it can be used in fertilizer. Nitrite is a preservative that also lowers your blood pressure, potentially to dangerous levels. And sodium nitride is an extraordinarily strong base that's extremely irritating. Totally different chemicals. Uh, anyway, that is naming ionic compounds in every way. Um, so I hope this video has been helpful to you. Let me know if you have any comments or questions in the comments section below. Thank you.